We're going to design a propaganda poster inspired by the anonymous group of activist artists, Guerrilla Girls. Let's start a new file and choose the print tab and the letter preset. I'm happy with the eight and a half by 11 and 300 pixels per inch, but I'll change the color mode to CMYK, which is best for printing. Let's go to the file dropdown and place embedded to bring in our image. You can press the enter key or the check mark here to confirm placement. Photoshop has this contextual toolbar now that some find helpful. I am still getting used to it. This toolbar offers a delete background option that is pretty slick, but I find I get the best results in a different way. So I'll undo that and hide my contextual toolbar. I'm going to go get the object selection tool located on the left. You'll notice when you hover over the image, it is showing you the selections with a pink outline that is able to identify. I like this selection, so I will click on her and then go to Select and Mask. I won't get into the weeds right now with the Properties panel at the right, with the exception of explaining this red color and opacity slider. When you slide the opacity down, you will see the full image come into view. If I am masking a human or animal, I usually like to use this great feature, Refine Hair. My selection looks pretty great, but there are a couple of areas I can improve. I'll zoom in and then go get the brush tool. You can change the size and hardness of the brush right here. A useful shortcut for the size is the keyboard left and right bracket keys. It's really important to choose the correct plus or minus icons depending on whether you want to add or subtract from your selection. It operates kind of like an eraser. I'll touch up around her hair and then click OK. Now, to actually create the mask, I have to click on this icon down here that looks like a camera. Now you can see that a stencil was created within this layer. Photoshop calls this a non-destructive layer. We are hiding part of the image, but we can bring it back anytime. Now let's make use of this background layer by going to the Edit dropdown and then Fill. I'll select the foreground layer. That's this yellow fill over here. I had already found the yellow I wanted, but you can go select the color you want by double clicking here and then filling the layer with your desired color. Now I'll move her a bit to the right. I like to do this with the transform feature, the command or control T shortcut. Now I want to change the color of her pants. I'll show you one way to do this. I'll click and hold down on the object selection tool to get the quick selection tool. This allows me to get more specific. You can click once or click and drag. Photoshop will try to pick up all similar pixel colors. It's pretty good at this, but I usually need to make some tweaks. I can go to Select and Mask again to make those changes. Instead of the brush, I'll use this tool and click and drag to remove all non-pan parts. Then I'll use the brush tool to get rid of these little leftover bits. Now I'll Command J to copy and paste the selection onto its own layer. Here's the fun part, changing the color. With this new layer selected, go to the image dropdown and the adjustments and then hue saturation. I'll move the hue slider to get a purple magenta color and then kick up the vibrancy with the saturation slider. Now I have some striking complementary colors at play with the yellow and purple. Let's bring in another image. File, place embedded, and I'll get this newspaper image. Now you can see how fast and easy it is to isolate an object when we have a clean background. I'll go to select and mask to see if I need to make any changes, and I don't. It looks great. I can go right to the mask icon and stencil it out. I'll use the transform tool to adjust the size and rotation so that it appears as though she is holding the paper. This is a good time to group these layers together and call it something logical. I'll move her over a bit more and reduce her size to make room for more design elements. Now I'll copy the masked newspaper and drag it out of that group folder. I want to create a stack of newspapers, so I'll copy and paste a bunch of times and then place all of these layers into their own group that I will name stack of newspapers. After adjusting her newspaper a bit more, I can see that I need to hide some of her hand now. 
This is why masking layers is so handy. I'll go back into Select and Mask and then brush out that area. We can move on to the Type tool to insert some text. I chose my font selections ahead of time. You can change these in the character panel. Go to the Windows drop down to get it if you don't see yours. I chose a 72 point size and a 72 point line spacing. If you don't have the Elza font, Impact is a good choice as well. I want to make another text box, but first I'll change the font size to 26 and the line spacing to 32. Make sure you are not on an existing text layer or else it will change that one. Now I'll drag a new text box and then replace the placeholder text with my new text. I'll make a couple of text changes and then spacebar a bit on each line to make the layout more interesting. After I double click on the color picker, the eyedropper tool appears when I hover over an image. I'll pick this magenta and then change the color of the most important words to create some emphasis. After I use the color once, it pops up into my swatches panel so that it's easy to go select it again. I think it would look better with more newspapers, so I will copy a few of them at once and then use the transform tool, Command T, so that I can move them all together. Then I will move a couple individually. In my layers panel, I see that one of my text layers is inside of a group, so I'll drag it out. I need to add one more text box to cite my sources. I'll make it a really small font and subtle color. Then I'll go to Edit Transform and select Rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. Then I'll move it over here to the right. Now it's time to save the file to my cloud document. Although posters are usually saved as PDF files, I will export it as a PNG for this project. 